So I'm going to talk about how to determine whether a molecule is aromatic or not. Uh, so hopefully you're familiar with Hoko's rule, which says that in an aromatic compound, uh, we should have four N plus two pi electrons, four N plus two pi electrons. So for example, if n was 0, you'd have 2 pi electrons. If n was 0, this would come down to be 2. Or if n equals 1, you could have 6 pi electrons. If n equals 1, then we get 4 plus 2 is 6. Or if n equals 2, you'd have 10 pi electrons. 4 times 2 is 8, and 2 is 10. Or if n were 3, you have 14 pi electrons. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Well, you can see the pattern. We just keep taking each number and adding 4. So next we have 18, 22, 26, 30, etc. Actually, uh, my own opinion is it's actually easier just to uh, think of Hoko's rule in terms of this list. So you start with the number 2 and just keep adding 4. You start with 2 and you add 4 to get 6, then you add 4 to get 10, then you add 4 to get 14, then you add 4 to get 18. You start with the number 2 and you keep adding 4. That gives you the list of how many pi electrons you can have and satisfy Huckel's rule and be aromatic. So again, Huckel's rule says that if the number of pi electrons is in this list, then the molecule is aromatic. Well, that means that the hardest thing we have to do then is figure out which of the electrons in the molecule count as pi electrons. Because we don't want to count all the electrons, we just want to count the pi electrons to see whether they're in this list. So that's the main thing I want to focus on uh, in these videos. How can you tell which electrons are the pi electrons? Well, the first thing we're going to have to talk about in order to be able to identify the pi electrons is hybridization. You have to be able to look at any atom and quickly identify what its hybridization is. sp3, sp2, or sp. Uh, now, Huckel's rule, usually you go over this in the second semester of OCHEM. Uh, so by this point, you, you, should usually, um, you should usually be pretty quick and pretty fast at identifying hybridization. Uh, and you're probably using some form of this rule right here. The number of hybridized orbitals equals the number of attached atoms plus the number of lone pairs. Like I say, by the second semester of OCHEM, I think most people are pretty good at using this rule for hybridization. However, what a lot of people don't realize is that there is an important exception to this rule. And that exception is very important when you're dealing with Huckel's Law. So that's why um, we need to go over hybridization again. Even if you think you already know how to do it, even if you know this rule, you might not know the exception to the rule. Uh, well, first of all, just in case, let's review how to, use the, how to use this rule, and then we'll go over the exception. So again, the rule is that the number of hybridized orbitals is equal to the number of attached atoms plus the number of lone pairs. So let's look at some examples. What's the hybridization of this carbon? It's sp3. How many attached atoms are there? Four. There's four hydrogen atoms attached. And how many lone pairs are there? Zero. Four plus zero is four, so we need four hybridized orbitals. Well, sp3 means we do have four hybridized orbitals. We have one s orbital and three p orbitals. That gives us four hybridized orbitals overall. So this would be an sp3. Here's a molecule of butane written in bond line notation. Let's figure out the hybridization of this carbon. Hybridization of this carbon. What do you think? Well, again, it's going to be sp3. Let's see why. It's attached to four atoms. Now, you can see there's two carbons that it's attached to. But you should also know that in bond line notation, there's also here two hidden hydrogens. So we have the two carbons and the two hydrogens. That gives us four atoms overall and no lone pairs again. So we have four attached atoms. We should have four hybridized orbitals, 1s and 3p. 
about this carbon on the far right. That's also sp3 for the same reason. Uh, it's attached to one carbon and three hidden hydrogens. So that's four attached atoms overall, no lone pairs. So again, we should have four hybridized orbitals. Again, that gives us sp3. Uh, again, I know that for a lot of you, hopefully, um, this is going these problems I'm giving you are very easy and just review. Um, I just want to do a couple, a few examples to review the basic rule, and then we'll go into the exception, which you might not know about. Let's figure out the hybridization of this nitrogen. Well, there are here three attached atoms. We have three attached atoms and one lone pair. So that would give us three plus one, which is four. So again, this is sp3. Three attached atoms and one lone pair. Three plus one is four. So we have four hybridized orbitals, one s and three p. That gives us four overall. So again, this would be sp3. What's the hybridization of this oxygen? There's two attached atoms and two lone pairs. Two plus two is four, so again it's sp3. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Now there are three attached atoms. A hydrogen, a hydrogen, and this carbon over here. Three attached atoms and no lone pairs. So we have three plus zero. So now we should have only three hybridized orbitals. So this carbon is sp2 because again it's attached to three attached atoms. So can you see that now we have three hybridized orbitals? We have one s orbital and two p orbitals. That gives us three hybridized orbitals overall. So again, this carbon is sp2. How about this boron? What's the hybridization of the boron? It's attached to three attached atoms, three hydrogens, and there are no lone pairs. Three attached hydrogens and no lone pairs. Uh, so that gives us three plus zero, which is three. So the number of hybridized orbitals should be three. sp2, three hybridized orbitals, one s and two p orbitals. By the way, uh, you might notice that this boron has an incomplete octet. It's only attached to three things, and there's no lone pair, so it has an incomplete octet. Hopefully you're familiar with the idea that some of the elements from the left-hand side of the periodic table can have incomplete octets, and boron is probably the most common example of that in OCHEM. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Well, now it has two attached atoms. It has a hydrogen and it has this carbon over here. Two attached atoms and zero lone pairs. Two plus zero is two. So the number of hybridized orbitals should also be two. That means this carbon is sp hybridized two hybridized orbitals. If you take one s orbital and one p orbital, that gives you two hybridized over, uh, orbitals overall. Uh, so uh, I think you probably picked up on the idea that even if you have a double or a triple bond to an atom, it still only counts in, according to this rule, as one attached atom. So even though the carbon has three bonds to this carbon over here, we still count this as only one attached atom. So overall, this carbon has two attached atoms, this hydrogen and this carbon. 